Kenny, I want to get some thoughts quickly off the top on UFC 251, Usman versus Burns. And I'd imagine you share my disappointment that Jorge Masvidal is not competing for the undisputed welterweight title, given all the work he's put in in a near 20-year career and the fact that he seems to have earned a shot at that undisputed title. Happy for Gilbert Burns, Kamara's teammate, to get the opportunity. But uh, do you feel shortchanged at all that we're not seeing game bread on July 11th? Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people expected to see Masvidal in there. It seemed like he, he had his camp ready. He was bringing in a lot of high-level wrestlers to get ready for that fight against Usman. Um, and unfortunately, uh, it, it didn't pan out. I, I think that's the fight everyone uh, wanted to see. Uh, it seemed like the UFC tried to make it happen last minute. It didn't pan out. And now it's uh, in the hands of Gilbert Burns, a guy who has been extremely consistent. Uh, he's been on fire as of late, uh, showing uh, incredible improvement in his striking skills. Um, and I think he has an advantage heading into this that no one else has in the welterweight division. And that is clearly the fact that he has been training with Usman for years right, and they right. both know each other inside and out. And I'm curious to see how this fight pans out for a guy in Kamara Usman who does his best work when he gets people on their back. I'm curious if he's actually going to try to put Gilbert Burns on his back, right, knowing right. what he knows right. from training with him. So. Uh, a lot of questions there. I can't wait to talk about that fight as it moves forward. Still an awesome fight, so I'm not incredibly disappointed. We talked a lot two weeks ago, or at least mentioned the loyalty that a lot of these athletes have had to Henry Hooft, Michael Johnson, Kamar mm -hmm. Usman, Gilbert Burns, Michael Chandler. I mean, seems like most guys, when they align with Henry, they stay with him as a striking coach. Is Henry even going to corner Kamaru against Gilbert? What are they going to do? I, I, you know, I don't know if this is... Uh, again, uh, hearing from a couple different sources that it's possible that Kamar Usman hasn't been training with Henry Hooft as much as of late. I don't know how much truth there is to it. Okay. Um, and I don't know if, you know, Hooft is going to pick sides, if he is going to, right. you know, corner one guy or if he's going to step aside. I, I don't know that. I, I, again, there's, for me, there's an interesting drama here in this fight. And it's always interesting anytime you get uh, teammates fighting each other. So, um, I can't wait for this fight. Very interesting. These guys are boys. I mean, your buddy, the photographer, Ryan Loco, said yeah. this seems super weird to him, yeah. spending all the time with those two guys. Kami Barzini, Greg Jones, or a couple other coaches that I think will have to make a decision. Vicente Luque, I believe, has been in the corner of Gilbert Burns. I yeah. feel like I saw Burns corner Camaro at one point in time. I could be wrong, but right. I feel like these dudes are tight, and it's a crazy backdrop. And at least as far as the three title fights – if this is the closest one on paper, according to Vegas, Kamar Usman minus 210 right now and Gilbert Dorino Burns plus 175. Hey, that kind of reminds me of uh, someone that doesn't want to fight the schmo, but I'm not going to. It's funny. I was yeah. like last December for charity. I want to do something. And I challenged uh, your, your buddy Ariel Hawani for 25K to a charity grappling match. Match. I've Find a way to find $25,000. I know ESPN would find $25,000, $50,000 on the line, charity grappling match. Crickets. No acknowledgement, yeah. no nothing. Right. But I didn't expect anything But that's different. like that's like calling out a, a, a girl. That's like calling a girl out to fight. Yeah, well, it's it's, you know it's, I mean? it's, it's, it's my seat. It's the media. Come on. Uh, Ariel Hawani is one of the weakest human beings on planet Earth. I mean, it's almost like... You should be arrested for even but, calling him out. But if you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. If you're going to make a life on calling people out and stuff like that, the second adversity and someone spins it back to you, you got to be able to handle it, man. Yeah, but you, listen, the thing, there was an issue one time with Ariel Hawani. Uh, you know, Ariel is one of those guys that is an agitator and he likes to push buttons and he likes to do all that stuff in a sport where people don't like their buttons pushed and don't like to be agitated and whatever. Um, my, my old security guard, I don't know what, he's, he's a super nice, he's a Hawaiian dude, really, really chill guy. He pushed Ariel one time uh, backstage and all, all, all hell broke loose. And I was like, what, kid, what are you doing? You might as well go out and fucking... Pick on one of the girls that work out and, and fuck it. It's literally the exact same thing. You can't do that. I mean, that's like, the, it's like, uh, you know, with, with all the bullying shit that's going on right now, I mean, 
He's that he's that dude that gets the sand kicked in his face at the beach and you know has to go work out with fucking Teddy Atlas or whatever the fucking guy's name was back then, <laughs> or Mr. Atlas or whatever his name was. T- uh, Teddy Atlas, not Teddy Atlas. The uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? The ESPN boxing commentator. Yep, yeah, yeah, not him. Oh, uh, not uh, him. You should probably work with him too. <laughs> but yeah, you, you just you, you know what you know what you know what you got when you're dealing with Ariel. Of the three title fights, who has the most pressure on their shoulders? My answer was Max Holloway, because I feel like if you lose twice to the champ, you're in purgatory, right? Mm-hmm. You're stuck. Mm-hmm. And we saw what happened when he moved up to 155. He he was a little small for the division against Dustin Poirier, at least. Do you agree with me, or do you think there's more pressure on, I don't know, a Jose Aldo, probably last time he fights for the belt, mm-hmm. or a Usman? What do you think? You know, I, I think maybe... Uh, I think maybe... It'll be for me is between Aldo and you know the Usman thing. Um, there's two different reasons for Aldo. Anytime it's your last of anything, especially mm-hmm. fighting for a belt, that's a big that's a big spot. And it's also a big spot being that he can become a two weight champion and all these other things with all the questions about him getting the title fight in the first place. That makes it difficult. Usman because all reports sound like he's leaving this team and um, you know. He's going to train somewhere else, and now he's defending his belt against his teammate. That's a big, a lot of there's a lot of pressure comes with fighting someone that you've trained with for a long time, someone that's going to get to stay home, and you're moving out. Like that's another big, big, uh, big factor into the fights. It's just uh, it 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 it's it's between those two. I know what you mean about Max, but the thing about Max is he's in such a tough weight, and Volkanovski isn't a guy that's held the belt for a long time. So we don't know how long he's going to have it. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if Max loses to Volkanovski again and then Volkanovski isn't the champion, there is reason to say he could fight someone else for the belt. But he won't fight Volkanovski again. He won't fight Alex again if he loses to him. But I just still believe that the weight's so tough and so deep that what if Zabit wins, right? Say if Zabit fights Volkanovski and then Max is on a run again. You could right. say Max versus Volkanovski is a fun, exciting fight. So I think those opportunities are still out there for Holloway. I don't know if they will be for Aldo if he uh, if he loses. I think, and he's still fairly young, Jose Aldo, for how long he's been around. So he could still be around for a number of years and never fight for the belt again. What's going on with the female featherweight division in the UFC? You look at the rankings, you can't list 15 females yeah. there. What's the future of that I division? I literally just told Sean and Mick in the last meeting, let's get this division built for her. Let's build this division for her and and, and let's start figuring this out. Who's competition? And now she's talking about retiring? Yeah, she said, um, this is quoting, yep. you know, the article... I don't know. I've achieved everything I wanted. I'm well. I can go on with my life, maybe take a new step, maybe find new talents, help some girls there, maybe be a coach too. Hmm. You know what's awesome about that? When you think about it, her retiring isn't awesome. That actually drives me nuts. But uh, it drives me nuts. You know how I always say, if you're talking about retiring, you probably should. Unless you're where she's at. It's like what I said about Cormier when he was talking about retiring a couple years ago. Um, You know, in in this time when I got guys crying about money, you know, one of our female fighters who could go on and keep doing this for a long time is saying, maybe I retire now. You know, she's got plenty of money and she can do it. Um, You know, nobody ever brings that shit up that the women are treated just like the men here, you know. This was some of these other, even, even tennis, which is a massive sport that's been around forever and has huge TV deals. And, um, you know, they do the, um, uh, what's the one in New York that they have every year? The uh, um, Okay, so, uh, no, not Wimbledon. Um, I know exactly where to, uh, bar- oh, yeah, the US, US Open. Open. I mean, US Open, Wimbledon, all these things. And, and, and the women still don't make what the men do, you yeah. know. Amanda Nunes is in a position where she can retire. Yeah, I mean, I could second that. Uh, if a title is on the line, doesn't matter if it's a male or female, they will headline that UFC pay-per-view card. Cejudo, in a division that, that you know, I was considering dropping, uh, you know, a million times. We kept it around uh, after Demetrius left and, and Cejudo won. 
and uh, and Cejudo retires. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I can't fucking retire right now, right? 